Hey guys, I am back on the reading wagon. I'm actually up to reading the, a good amount of books every single month again, and it just took me four months to do it. So I read seven books in the month of April, and that was partially uh, it, thanks to the um, Dewey's 24-hour readathon that I did participate in, and I read two books during that 24-hour period. So yes, I read seven books, and let me tell you a little bit about each one of them. The first book that I read was A Great and Terrible Beauty by Libba Bray. I gave it a three and a half out of five. Um, I picked it up because even though it's not really my kind of book usually, I got it at the thrift store for um, one dollar or two dollars. It was pretty cheap, so I was all about that. Um, it's like a Victorian gothic tale of a girl who goes to a finishing school after the death of her mother, and there's like magic and like some witchcraft, paranormal stuff that happens at that school. I thought it was like, I kind of was into it. I kind of liked it. I kind of I dug it a little bit. It wasn't, like I said, my kind of thing normally. Um, and I think at times the pace was really slow. Um, and there were some loose ends that really didn't tie up. And uh, I really can't fault it too much. This is a book in a series. I'm not going to pick up the rest of the series. Um, but it was fine for what it was. It was an okay read. And it was worth the dollar at the thrift store. So that is what that's really all about. So, okay, right? The next book that I read was The Dinner by Herman Coach. I've been pronouncing that last name like six different ways. I'm just going to kind of go with one of them. Um, I gave this a four and a half out of five. I was really surprised with how much I love this book because this is a book that I've seen a billion times at like thrift stores and half price books and I just never had any interest in ever picking it up. I never knew what it was about. It's about two couples who um, meet to have dinner and they discuss their two teenage sons over dinner. I guess the two teenage sons colluded together in some activity or some act. They did something and the parents are discussing it. If you like, okay, let me rephrase that. If you don't like books where the main characters are unlikable, bad people, nasty people, people you just hate to read, you're not going to like this book. And that's what I've been seeing with the majority of the Goodreads reviews. People say they don't like it because the characters are unlikable. Well, then that's okay. I guess I understand that. But I really, I don't think that a book has to have likable characters. And I don't think that having unlikable characters, intentionally unlikable characters, should prevent a book from being considered a good book. It's not that the characters are written poorly and you hate them as a result. They are all meant to be bad people. And that's the point of it. And I love a character-driven book that has bad character, bad characters driving the plot forward. Um, I, it was really fast-paced. There were really good twists in there. They were delivered really masterfully. The writing was elegant and sophisticated. This book was, I don't know why I didn't give it a five, but I just, it was so close for me. That was, this is a four and a half out of five. So it was one of the better books I read this year. And I, yeah, Re recommend for sure. All right, the next one I read was Marrow by Taryn Fisher. I gave this a four out of five. I've actually, this book is one of the, the books that have been on my TBR list the longest. And not just on my TBR list, but a book that I really wanted to read on my TBR list. And I had been on there for years and I hadn't picked it up. Um, and I really had no reason not to. Actually, my, maybe the reason was it's hard to find because it's like self or independently published. Um, so you're not really going to find it at a lot of traditional stores. This story is about Margot who lives in a town called The Bone, and it's like this gritty, like, hard knock life kind of town. There's drugs, and it's just not a good place, and it just really, I didn't, I don't know what I was expecting, but I wasn't expecting this. It's kind of a coming of age tale of her, and then it kind of also becomes like a revenge vigilante kind of story, which I was, I was with it. I, I was, I was in it. I thought that the writing was really, really good. The character, I really cared about her and what she was going through. And I will say this, what prevented me from giving it a better rating was the ending was disappointing. It was a cheap ending and it was confusing. So once I was presented with what the ending was, like what the reveal of the story was, it wasn't consistent. This book would have been so much better, but the ending was just cheap. And it, there was something added there to add like a shock value or a thrill factor that I was like, it didn't need to be that way because the book itself was already good. It didn't need a cheap kind of ending. Um, so, but I, uh, that aside, I still gave it a four. I still really did like it. I thought the writing was great and I would read more from Taryn Fisher in the future. So the next book I read was Goat by Brad Land. Um, this is a memoir of a young man's 
experience at college and going through really intense hazing. It's really short and like I said, it's a memoir, so it is a true story. I gave it a four. It was really, um, it was, there was times where it was really graphic and really violent and surprising and, but it was a really good, just a slice of this kid's year to two years. It wasn't the most memorable or amazing thing I'd ever read. That's why I couldn't give it more than that, uh, a four star rating. Um, but it was kind of, it was just an eye opening kind of read. You hear about some schools having a hazing that happens, very variations of the unspoken hazing. We don't do hazing, but then they do. But this is just like a, like a really alarming um, viewpoint on one that was a little too far. Next book that I read was also a book that I read during the Dewey's 24-hour readathon was The Metamorphosis by Franz Kafka. I give this a three and a half out of five. This is a reread. I read it once a long time ago. Um, it's just a really like face value kind of story. Um, a guy, uh, Gregor Samsa, wakes up in the morning to discover that he's been turned into a giant beetle and then he just tells, then it's just the story of his life from that point on. We don't have a reason, there's no cure, there's nothing that happens, aliens aren't involved, it's just what it is. He wakes up, he's a beetle, and now his life, like in his relationships with his family and his boss and his job and just what happens as a result. Gregor Samsa remains to me like the most, like the character that I feel the most like sympathy slash empathy for. This poor guy, like this, not only is he facing being turned into a beetle, but he already standing as a character is played with feelings of like helplessness and hopelessness and feeling like he's a burden onto his family and a burden onto his boss and he's like pitiful and then he gets turned into a bug and then he instead of him taking that into himself he worries more about how it's affecting his family than it is him like this character makes me so sad every time i read this little tiny book um it's a book that i think can be read pretty face value but i do know that there's a lot of people that deeply analyze it so you if you like that kind of thing if you like to deeply analyze books um you can totally do that with this book um or you can just read it as a guy who is a beetle next book was night by ellie wiesel and i also read this i read this i read half of it for the dewey's readathon and the second half uh the next day um and i i say ellie wiesel Eli Wiesel. I don't really know how to pronounce his name and I still don't. Um, this is a memoir of his experience in a concentration camp when he was um, a, a teenager. I gave it a four out of five. It was hard to read and every time I read or watch something about the Holocaust, I continually, my husband is a history buff and I constantly bring it up to him and I know he's constantly explained to me what the climate was like back then, how things unfolded the way they did, but I still constantly come to him and say, how were people allowed to do this? How was this okay? How could people have been treated this way? Like, how? Like, I just need to know how. How that was ever okay. And he, like, obviously doesn't, he never did agree with it, but he's able to tell me historically how things progressed and how things got the way they did, but I still, it's still, I can't, I can't. I can't. This is so challenging to read. There were some tough passages. I felt sick to my stomach reading. Um, I mean, thank God it was so short. I couldn't read a book this thick about someone's experience in the Holocaust. I just couldn't do it. Um, like, my empathy, like, just was pouring out of me as I was reading it. It was, you know, it was, it was written really simply. It wasn't trying to dress up anything with fancy language. It was his experience, what he saw, how he felt, people around him, and that was the book. Um... So, um, yeah, that makes, this is the second memoir that I read this month. That's kind of crazy for me. So, um, even though it was challenging to read, I think everyone should read it. It's good to be faced with things that challenge you. It's good to be faced with things that make you uncomfortable. I think it makes you grow as a person and as a reader. So, uh, I got this in my library, so it may be at your library too. I would read it. It takes no time at all. Um, and I think it'll help. It just, it's good for the soul to read this kind of stuff, I think. The last book that I read this month was The Creeping by Alexandra Soroe. I gave it a 3 out of 5. <sighs> Ultimately for me, the book just wasn't crazy memorable. I wasn't zooming through it. It just seemed kind of typical of the genre. It is like a young adult mystery, there's a murder type of thing. Um, it's got a lot of like 
things that I'm just I've seen so many times in books. Um, there's this really big monologuing ending that lasts for pages and pages, and then even as I was reading it, it didn't all make sense. It seems like that it was just sort of shoved into like 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 I don't know. I just don't think that it was a great way to wrap up the book. Um, the main character I didn't like. She just was like, I just didn't like reading about her. And it's not because she was intentionally supposed to be a dislikable character. I just don't think she was written that well. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I mean, when, like, the, you know, the whodunit was revealed, it was supposed to, I can tell by the way it was written that it was supposed to be this <gasps> moment. But for me, it was just like, okay. Like, I didn't, I think it's because I didn't have a good connection to any of the characters to really, like, care by that time who and why and what, how, when. So, and it was a big book to sort of just like inch my way through. Um, there were some, there were definitely some parts that I could see were weird and creepy and kind of interesting. Um, I think it'd make a good like TV series more than a book. I think there's a lot of good visuals in there that I could see being put into a show that I don't know really carried over well for a book. Anyway, that's my thoughts. All right, so here are all the books that I read in April. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm back. <laughs> uh, really though, this is why I need to do, do more readathons because it forces me to read more. So, um, all right, that is it. Um, if any of you are watching this now, you're probably watching it right in the middle of Book Buddyathon. Um, sneak preview what I'm reading right now. Ah. Oh, you missed it. <laughs> okay. Um, so I will see you guys probably for the wrap up of my book buddy a thon because I'm supposed to do one of those sometime. <sighs> okay, I gotta go. Today is crazy. It's my Sunday, and the, the Sundays are usually not busy, but they're busy today, so I gotta go. All right, I'll see you guys later. All right, get out of here. Go. See you later. Bye.